A growing rift this morning between the United States and a very key Mideast ally. Saudi Arabia is upset with the Obama administration over its handling of Syria and Iran. In Rome, Secretary of State John Kerry will meet in just minutes with another regional partner, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Our senior correspondent John Miller is a former deputy director of national intelligence. John, good morning. Good morning. So what do you make of this, uh, this Saudi intelligence uh, chief, former ambassador of the United States, suggesting that uh, they're going to be tougher? Well, this has been building, and I think it just burst this week in a public way. But you've got the Saudis. There's an old deal in the region. We supply security and weapons to the Saudis. They supply us oil. We supply security to the Israelis, and we do that through influence in the region between the Saudis, the Egyptians, the Jordanians, Bahrain. Uh, but a lot of that has crumbled. The Egyptian regime has, has fallen. Uh, it's a bit of a jump ball right now with the military in control. We're pushing the Saudis for more democracy. There's the Iranian nuclear threat where the Saudis feel we should be tougher. There's what's going on in Syria where the Saudis uh, would like to see Assad fall, don't want chemical weapons in the region, and where they think we fell for a con job with this Russian deal to clean up the weapons. So when you take all of that, the Saudis are sending a signal that we used to have 100 percent support from you and we're feeling about 50 percent of that. Yeah, but also it is the question of who's the most important power in the Middle East. There is. And one, one thing is that, that for us, that was always the Saudis because they had the oil and they had the money that went with it and they had the regional influence. Yeah. One thing that's certain is it's not us anymore. Our influence has waned as some of the regimes that we depended on for balance have crumbled. And if you look at Bahrain as an example, here is a Sunni monarchy. They've got a king and a majority Shia nation that is next door to the Saudis. They're connected literally by a bridge. Mm -hmm. And while they're in a slow motion revolution there, and remember, since 1971, this has been the headquarters of the U.S. Fifth Fleet, it's strategically important to us. The Saudis look at us as not backing them when they came to help put down the, uh, the resistance, uh, pushing democracy and human rights uh, on a regime that is tenuous um, in some measure at this time. I mean, this is remarkable, this criticism, which started with, as Charlie pointed out, Prince D Bandar with European officials over the weekend. And then we heard Saudi Prince Turkey Al Faisal, who's the former intelligence chief and also a former ambassador, continuing the criticism, saying this, the current charade of international control of Bashar's chemical arsenal would be funny if it were not so blatantly perfidious and designed not only to give Mr. Obama an opportunity to back down, but also to help Assad to butcher his people. These are very candid words. And remember, Nora, take that in the candid, yes. take take yes. those two statements rem, that that you know, these are two people who have US presidents going back quite a ways on speed dial. Take that in the context that the Saudis on the 18th of October uh, just rejected a seat on the National Security Council at the UN. What they're doing is they're pushing this away and saying this issue has to be dealt with. The long range is they need they need the they need the jets, they need the fighter jets, they need the weapons. Um, and there's still and there's still that we're buying oil. So they're mad, but we haven't broken up yet. John Miller, thank you.